Stormy Daniels, a key figure in former President Donald Trump's hush money trial, just got embarrassed as her testimony seems to have just completely fallen apart. As expected, Donald Trump's legal team grilled Stormy Daniels in her recent cross-examination. Now, one of the big questions is why did she wait so long to tell her story? Well, Daniels insists that she was threatened in a parking lot in Las Vegas. She said that it was scary for her because she was threatened by a stranger to leave Donald Trump alone while she was with her daughter. Although it wasn't scary to share the story years after, right as Donald Trump was making a run for the White House. Hmm, I don't know about that, Miss Daniels. I guess it made sense to share the story after knowing that. Now, what's really weird is that it seems as if she told absolutely no one about this Vegas incident. I wonder if this is as credible as the ghosts in her haunted house, allegedly. So anyway, there's not a soul that can back up her claim about this Las Vegas situation. Critics say that it's probably because she doesn't trust anyone with the story. Okay, either that or it didn't happen. And that's the issue here. How are they going to prove something that's just hearsay? And it's why Daniels is clashing with Donald Trump's defense attorneys. Check this out. The third week of Donald Trump's criminal trial ending with a dramatic confrontation as his defense team wrapped up a combative two-day cross-examination of Stormy Daniels over a decades-old story of an alleged sexual encounter between the adult film star and the then-reality TV star Trump, who says it never happened. Prosecutors have accused the former president of buying her silence to deceive voters in 2016 and then doctoring his internal business records to cover it all up once in the White House. What do you think of the story Daniels testimony? Defense attorney Susan Neckless attempting to put Daniels on trial, highlighting her shifting accounts of certain details from that night in 2006 to insinuate she's a liar while highlighting Daniels' time in the porn industry saying it, quote, gave her a lot of experience in making phony stories about sex appear to be real. Daniels, defiant on the stand, responding, wow, that's not how I would put it. The sex in the films, it's very much real, just like what happened to me in that room. The questioning and testimony this week only briefly delving into the actual $130,000 payment. Mr. Trump's former fixer, Michael Cohen, made to Daniels just days before the election the linchpin of the state's case. Instead, the defense trying to cast Daniels as simply hungry for money and fame and determined to help put Mr. Trump behind bars because it would help her bottom line, pointing to past tweets mocking his legal woes and her current catalog of merch, including a $40 candle depicting her as stormy saint of indictment. Necklace asking, you're celebrating the indictment by selling things from your store, right? Daniels shooting back, not unlike Mr. Trump. Legal analysts have pointed out that the defense scored a lot of points when it came to Stormy and her credibility, which puts in the question why the prosecution is putting her up on the stand at all. Because this is not about Donald Trump having an affair. It's all about the alleged falsification of business records, which has many questioning what this is all about. Some say it's just to make Donald Trump look bad in front of a jury. However, the same could be said for Stormy Daniels, as she's also got some money tied up in this case. Now, some of you guys may have already heard about an idea, but the fact fact is, she owes Donald Trump some money. Now, before I really get into this here, guys, all I ask is that you take one second, hit the like button for the video if you're enjoying the content. Also, if you like the conversation and you'd like more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. All right. So Stormy Daniels owes Donald Trump more than $500,000 in legal fees and a failed defamation lawsuit. And like I said, her credibility is shot because she was alternately confirming or denying having sex with Donald Trump, depending upon whether she was paid for her story. And when asked by the defense if Daniels wanted to make more money, she answered saying, don't we all want to make more money? She was also asked if she hated Donald Trump and she simply answered yes. Which brings many critics to conclude that this is part of her revenge tour and that she's only out to make money with her 15 minutes of fame here. So here's something else that came out again recently. In a statement from 2018, Daniels denied ever having an affair with Donald Trump, which is kind of weird now because she's probably risking perjury with her recent testimony in court. So it's stormy or bust. And she's a bad witness because let me show you a little video. This is when I had stormy on in 2018. And first I asked her why she had sex with Trump. OK, <laughs> but you say it's not a Me Too case. It is not a Me Too case. What? I mean, I wasn't uh, assaulted. I wasn't attacked or raped or coerced or blackmailed. They tried to shove me in the Me Too box to further right. their own agenda. And first of all, I didn't want any part of that because it's not the truth and I'm not a victim in that regard. 
That's not what she's saying now. That's not what she's saying now, Joe, because what she is saying, she testified that Donald Trump was bigger and blocked her way. She said, my hands were shaking so hard, I just wanted to leave, and she blacked out during the alleged encounter. So now questions over whether or not she committed perjury, but the, the larger point is that there are a lot of anti-Trump members of the media who are saying, man, I wish I could stand behind this case, but I can't. And to make matters worse, an audio recording from 2018 has resurfaced. One that played to the attorneys and the judge in this case. The conversation was between Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels attorney Keith Davidson. In the recording, it's been said that Davidson was threatening both Cohen and Trump. On the phone, he says that the publicist's boyfriend of Daniels was going to run with this story to the press, saying, quote, I wouldn't be the least surprised if he comes out and says, you know what, Stormy Daniels, she wanted this money more than you can ever imagine. I remember hearing her on the phone saying, you effing Keith. Davidson. You better settle this goddamn story. Because if he loses this election, and he's going to lose, if he loses this election, we all effing leverage this case is worth zero. End quote. Now, I'm not sure about you guys, but it sure sounds like Daniels was trying to extort money from Donald Trump during his 2016 run for president. Now, the question is, will she be held accountable? Now, there's also a couple of weird instances within her testimony. Although the highlight may be the part where Daniels was asked about her career as a medium, who can communicate with the dead. Now, it's hard to make this stuff up here, guys, but this is supposedly what she did. And this was discussed in her testimony. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Judge Juan Marchand allowed this to happen. But there is something that he doesn't want for this case. He doesn't want Trump's team talking about former Manhattan assistant DA Mark Pomerantz. In fact, he rejected Donald Trump's bid to subpoena Pomerantz as part of his hush money trial because Donald Trump's legal team is seeking documents from Pomerant's time at the Manhattan DA's office, as well as those dated after he left. He's a prominent figure in the story because he helped lead the probe into Donald Trump under DA Cyrus Vance. He only left in 2022 because he was disappointed in Alvin Bragg for not pursuing charges against Trump much earlier. I bring hard cases when they are ready. Uh, last year when I took office, I did an exhaustive review of a matter put before me uh, and came to the same conclusion that multiple senior prosecutors in my office independently came to. And that was that Mark Pomerantz's case simply was not ready. I continue to be concerned uh, that it could jeopardize or uh, undermine our ongoing investigation. Mershon said that these requests were impermissibly broad and amount to an improper fishing expedition. Now, again, I have to reiterate that this guy literally helped in investigating Donald Trump years ago, but he's not relevant according to this judge. Unbelievable. Daniels, who's talking about speaking to the dead and describing Donald Trump's private areas, on the other hand, is somehow relevant. Yeah, go figure. So Pomerantz, by the way, he made an entire book about Donald Trump's alleged financial crimes. He describes his work investigating all of this, but he's not relevant to this case that's all about supposed financial crimes. Which begs the question, what's wrong with Judge Juan Mershon? This now puts a huge question mark on what the prosecution is out here to do, because many experts are calling that this could be the nail in the coffin for DA Alvin Bragg's legal career. But what do you guys think about it? Does this make sense to any of you at all? Or is this about making Donald Trump look bad in front of the American people before the 2024 presidential election? As always, you guys are free to your own opinions. I just want to thank you all for rocking with me. Thank you for hitting the like button on this video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and I'll see you on the next one.